Hello, I'm Sarah. Today I want to give you a bit of information about Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, or CBT for short. CBT is widely recommended um, by the NHS. So in England, if we go to the GP because of depression or anxiety or any low emotional state, we're likely to be referred um, for some CBT support. And how it works is CBT totally acknowledges the link between our thoughts, um, our emotions, the physical sensation that they produce, and how that then leads us to behave. And by identifying our thoughts and noticing that we have some unhelpful thinking habits, so that's you know negative thought patterns that we kind of get into in certain situations quite often. That then leads to feeling, you know, having uh, negative emotions, so feeling fear, um, for example, and then that leads to physical sensations. So if we're frightened, sometimes you know our palms will be sweaty, our heart rate might increase. Um, we get that cold feeling in the pit of our stomach. There's lots of physical sensations. And as a result of feeling like that and thinking those fearful thoughts, we then behave in a certain way. And if we can change the way we think, if we can start to notice when we're having those unhelpful sort of thinking habits, we can then change how we think. So CBT looks at giving us and when it does give us strategies to improve the way that we think. So just staying with the idea of the unhelpful thinking habits for a minute, I'm just gonna give you a few examples. So one of them is catastrophizing. So catastrophizing means that something happens and we immediately think that the worst possible scenario has happened. So someone's late for meeting us. Um, you know, we've arranged to meet a friend maybe in a cafe, um, they're half an hour late, and we, as soon as we sort of think, yeah, they're, they're, they're really late now, um, we think, oh my goodness, they've had a car crash, um, they might be really ill, they might be really, um, you know, they might be in the hospital, they might be dead. We take it to its worst possible scenario. And of course, often, the person's just late because of traffic, or they've forgotten, or they've been held up at work, or something that doesn't need us to go into those fearful thoughts about the worst thing having happened. So staying with that example, if we're starting to think they've had, you know, a serious car accident, that will bring up maybe anxiety, you know, emotions that will be connected to those sort of thoughts might be um, fear, anxiety, um, terror, um, we might be totally traumatised by that physical sensations will then come along with that. So the cold feeling in the pit of our stomach, the not being able to think straight because we're frozen, we're immobilised by the fear. And all of those things, if we then find out that actually they were just stuck in traffic, we've gone through all that emotional um, turmoil and that physical sensation of something terrible has happened. We've gone through all of that for no reason. If we do that to ourselves a lot by thinking in unhelpful ways, that's really going to have an effect on our mental health. It's going to lead to poor mental health quite often. Because those feelings come about because of that fight or flight um, sort of safety mechanism, if you like. If we actually are in danger or something terrible has happened, you know, physically we go into a fight or, fight, fight or flight situation. But actually we don't need to do that when someone's just half an hour late because of being stuck in traffic. So by starting to recognise the unhelpful thinking habits that we've got into, we can start to change them. And that means that we spend less time in that terrible, fearful place or feeling very strong emotions, so anger, um, and then that 
desire to, you know, maybe go and hurt somebody or, um, you know, it really affects our behaviour depending on what negative emotion we're stuck in. So CBT, you know, one of the skills is, a, or, or a lot of the focus actually, is about changing how we think. The very first step to that is recognising when we are catastrophizing or um, being critical of ourselves. So another thinking habit is called critical self. So whatever happens, you think, oh, that's my fault, I'm to blame for that. And then we feel, you know, we, feel, we might feel shame or we might feel, oh goodness, I've let people down, that was my fault. Again, that puts us in a really bad place emotionally. Um, Overgeneralising is something else that's a habit that we quite often do. So that's when you notice yourself saying, oh, this always happens to me. Um, uh, you know, I always, I'm clumsy, I always drop things. Well, is that true? If you really always dropped things, that would mean that you probably spent your life wading through broken crockery and broken glass, which generally isn't the case, but we overgeneralise um, and say that something either always happens or never happens. Oh, no one, you know, they never turn up on time for me. Well, again, that's, you know, we put ourselves in a, in a, in a bad place with that. So there's, there's quite a lot, there's quite a list of um, uh, unhelpful thinking habits. Um, there's, I'm going to put a link, there is a link to it in my blog on my website. Um, website address is in the details of this video. And it's a link to the unhelpful thinking habits. So if you struggle with anxiety or anger or feeling very low, you know, low self-worth or feeling unlovable or feeling that everything's your fault, have a look at the unhelpful thinking habits and the first step is to think, do I recognise any of those in myself? Um, you might think that you might find it's a world champion in quite a few of them um, and we often use those habits, you know, quite a few in one fell swoop. Um, we're great at combining them and actually the first step is to recognise that those habits are unhelpful. Um, so yeah, have a look at my website, um, have a look at the links on that, or you might just find it if you Google unhelpful thinking habits, um, there's a PDF on a website called Get Self Help um, that, that you'll probably be able to find and see if any of those, um, if you recognise them. So yeah, my this series is going to kind of unpack some of those CBT tools but this one that I'm talking about is the is sort of a good starting point. So thank you for listening. Um, if you want to contact me, I'm at Sarah at emotional support for you .com. Take care. Thank you.